Public Television for Johnson City and Elizabethton, Tennessee, this is Broadside TV on Cable Channel 8. We are located at Elm and Millard Streets in Johnson City, zip code 37601. Our telephone number, should you wish to comment on this program, is area code 615-926-8191. Now, a videotape by Paul and Rhonda Congo, recorded at Clinch Valley College in Wise, Virginia, in August of 1974, The Fiddlin' Powers Family. Boys and girls, I guess you'd like to know who these folks are before we start. That's Miss, Miss Porter over here on the end, and Miss Sadders, Miss Iris, my wife, and my name's E.E. Iris, and I'm the one who broke the band up 50 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I might say this has been 40, 40, about 48 years since we played much. In other words, that's when they made records, about 48 years ago, and we haven't been playing any harder since. And we had our father with us, we three girls and sisters. We had our dad and our brother with us at that time. And of course, time changes all things, and we're just, uh, for the past little while, I've been picking up our music again. There are so many real old numbers that we've entirely forgotten. But we think we'll know, uh, play a few that you folks probably haven't heard. Well, did you call yourselves when you were playing together back in the early years? Um, we've been the Paris and family from Virginia. And we uh, traveled for quite a few years before we recorded for Victor Edison and the OK Companies. And we retired in 1928 due to the matrimony bug. <laughs> Well, she has this was married in 25, but uh, we have uh, played in some concerts since uh, we've been together like we are now, and uh, trying to pick up some of the old numbers. If you would mind, can you tell us we what it was that you actually got started playing together before you even performed, say, commercially? Or yes, I can tell you how our band was formed. Uh, our mother passed away when I was three years old, and our daddy and mother were both, um, had natural talent. We don't know music on paper. And uh, he always said he didn't play the violin, he played the fiddle. And she played the five-string banjo, and they could exchange instruments and play. And uh, as time went by after mother passed away, uh, our brother played the five-string banjo. He was the oldest of the children. And he brought a mandolin home to this sister, and she'd never seen one before. But she just learned it. See, we inherited this music. And then this one had the guitar. And uh, I was so small that we traveled quite a while that I didn't have an instrument. My part of the program was dancing. As far back as I could remember, I could dance. She danced, Charles. And then later, when I got about seven years old, and I also danced the clock. Yeah. Back then, they called it the clog and even the buck and wing. And uh, when I was about seven, Daddy said he believed in fitting the instrument to the person, so he got a ukulele. I had never seen a ukulele, but I learned it. And uh, we traveled playing schoolhouses. We traveled, started out small, going to places not too far away, playing uh, country schoolhouses and uh, theaters. And then we got into... Uh, Larger theaters, we played behind the footlights, if you recall that area. And um, we played in Johnson City at an old-time fiddler's convention. We were the only string band there. And there was a gentleman there that um, was putting this convention on. It was the United Commercial Travelers. And, uh, the only person there who had recorded their music was Fiddlin' John Carson. Now that was in about somewhere between 1921, 22, or possibly 23. And he, our music was so well received, he said, I'm going to take you to New York and put you on record. This other musician, the only one that had recorded, was Fiddlin' John Carson. This was for the okay country? No, this was... Our first recordings, as well as I remember, were for Art Victor. Victor. Yes, and, and also then we went back to New York later and recorded for Edison. 
And in the latter years, while we were active, we recorded for uh, the OK Company in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. That was in 1927. And we retired in 28. About what, for historical reference, about what year was it when y'all first, first got started going on the road with your with Oh, you, it would have been. Both your parents and the three sisters, right? It would have been before 19 and 20. I just don't recall. Oh. And about what time was it when you reported for victory then that first time? Well, we have a little pamphlet that's dated 1924. <clears throat> Excuse me, but a uh, fellow out of New York that we saw recently came to Bristol when we played over there. Mm -hmm. And he has some uh, county records uh, studio in New York. And he said that usually they would sometimes record and not put them out until the next year, not release them. We think it was either 23 or 24. And uh, then, maybe possibly a year later, we recorded for the Edison. I have one of the old cylinder type with us that we made. I think they call them Ambrol records. And um, and I bought one of the flat records. Well, I bought two. I bought one for me with uh, uh, Victor and one with Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. This first record this one's for Victor true. was a flat record. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We actually made those in Camden, New Jersey, of course. So, uh, we uh, auditioned in New York City, and that was where we stayed for about two and a half weeks on our first recording session. Then, of course, after we got records out, now back then, there was no television. There wasn't, radio was just getting started, but we recorded over WJZ while we were in New York uh, radio station, and then we had an engagement with KDKA in Pittsburgh, and a car wreck uh, killed that engagement. We had a car wreck in Maryland, and we couldn't fulfill our engagement. And so just after we retired, of course, um, radio was really going well, you know. But our band was very famous to just not have uh, anything like radio much to carry it across, you know. It was just when we always got better turnouts, I'm happy to remember where we played uh, repeat performances. We'd go back, and people would say, oh, do come back, we'll guarantee you a full house, you know, if it wasn't a full house. We'd play some of them. I recall one place in Kentucky that uh, there wasn't more than two dozen people in the uh, auditorium, and uh, our dad said, we will play you a few numbers, and you can get your money back at the door. He said, we never play to an audience of this size. So they were so delighted, they asked us to come back and said, uh, we will see that you get a full house. And uh, I don't recall that we ever, ever did repeat that uh, particular town. But we made a lot of friends and enjoyed it. And we still enjoy our music, though we're not quite as young as we were. Every time we get together, we play a little bit. We've had a lot of fun. My harp, for some reason, is not picking up good uh, today. This was the first time we played this morning, she and I. It's just been since. Uh, in 1971, we played in Lewisburg College. I have a brochure at the concert there. Well, of course, they had a lot of different concerts. Now, they had uh, Fred Waring, and uh, that's a different class, you know, in the Pennsylvanians. And uh, in the old time, folk and country music, uh, we'll show you the brochure before we leave and these records and everything. They seem to like our, our music. I hope we can still do as well as we did then. <laughs> we really haven't played together very much recently. We've been sort of lazy about that. But a few of these old numbers, we don't even recall the titles. But we play uh, Irish Jigs and Reels and Porn Pipes. I'm sure you folks the know what waltzes. we're talking about. The old waltzes and uh, what they called it back in when we were young, love songs and ballads. Is there anything else you can think of right now? If not, you can ask us later. Well, no, we'd like to hear you play one. I can take plenty of questions. Why don't you play a couple of verses? Okay. I don't know now. I don't know. Well, we we haven't. Well, we can see. I think we'll try an old one that I think we're to. That is, uh, it goes back as far as I can remember, and it's Silver Bells.
about the same age. I don't know, probably some of you have heard it. It's called Rainbow. It's a real The black you are seeing here covers a sink instability on the original material, which resulted in a serious glitch. The Fiddlin' Powers family returns momentarily. a lot if you just stop to think about it to make a good fiddler the reason I think that dad was considered to be one of the reasons to be such a good fiddler is I really believe he could play all night and never play the same tune twice <laughs> and you know there's lots of good fiddlers that they just maybe have a half a dozen or something that they're really good on <laughs>
played uh, at theaters, for instance, the young folks would get together while a program was going on, and then they would ask us when we closed our program if we would play a while for the thing. Must have long time ago. We danced a little bit after the program was over. Um, I think our next number probably will be the Mockingbird, and I'm pretty sure a lot of these folks have heard that.
Now, uh, Mrs. Senator. She's been married in 28, 1928. Right. Um, I've been making some, some observations here. Uh, a lot of these, these ideas of, of style and the way he puts music together is, is obvious to me from the experience with the other kind of old time bands. But your type of music, you might have two lead instruments perhaps both playing at the same time and not any one musician particularly taking a break. I think that was an influence of jazz music that sort of hit to uh, country music scene later. But uh, when you were playing with your father, well, your, the fiddle was of course the, the, the lead instrument at the time. It was. Yes, it was the lead instrument, but she played uh, also practically the same way. She played the belly too. Both See, it notes the same thing. It notes the same notes right. as the fiddle. No, and of course on ukulele, I had a lot of cards, and I cards knew she did, and so did the banjo. Sometimes the banjo played straight through. My brother played uh, finger style and also what they call the claw hammer style. And as to my style of playing the auto harp, you may have noticed that a lot of the people hold their harps like this. Yes, ma'am. Well, I, I, I never, I didn't play the auto harp at all until I got arthritis in my hands. They won't straighten in these middle joints. And, um, well, if you've got a love for music and you know what it's like, you get just as hungry to play as you do to eat if you miss a meal. And uh, so I really worked at it after I got this uh, arthritis. I was in the hospital in the University of Virginia for some time, and uh, I had a long six bell, but I I came out of it playing, I won Southern Highland Champion in 1971 mm -hmm. down in Smokies at a convention. Of course, that made me very happy and very humble because the... Where did you first, uh, who helped you when you were learning to play the auto harp? Uh, I'm sure you were mostly self-taught work. Yes, did you, did, I had no help. Did you have the opportunity to listen to other musicians that played the auto harp and things like that? No. I never really, I, this is my own style. Uh, a lot of people now, they have a different type of hand motion with this hand. But if you may have noticed, I pick out the melody to all that we've played so far. I had one uh, gentleman from, uh, well, he was editor of the Farm Journal. He was from down below Memphis, I believe. He asked me how long I've been picking out the melody I play. And re actually, it hasn't been too long. I just sort of all at once uh, realized I could do that. I started out uh, recording, you know, and singing. Mm -hmm. And I don't have a strong voice, but I might try two or three old ones that uh, if I can get that microphone up closer a little later, that you all might enjoy. Y'all want to see if I can sing? I wonder if that pick up, it really picks up. Okay, yeah. let me see now if I can recall this. This, oh, I want This is an old uh, number that goes back, I don't recall how many years, but I was just a child when I learned it. And it's called Blue Ridge Mountain Blues. I guess you know that one.
Well, I could play an instrumental number now. Um, I'm sure most of you know this. Something about the age and history of Bonaparte's retreat.
just out of the guitarist curiosity, what yeah. kind of instrument did you play before that? Well, just the plain guitar. Mm -hmm. And before that? Five and before that, the five-string band. And she could play that old claw hammerstein, too. Uh -huh. <laughs> Although yeah, she played the hammerstein most of the year. Yeah, I don't uh, play the banjo much anymore. I don't have one C. And, we could produce a banjo for you, but you might have I wish, I'll, If I could play as much as she does, I'd really play. I'd have to practice it. I'd have to practice it. I have thought about uh, my instrument. I had a thought about One more thing. Um, when you were first learning to play the guitar, were there a lot of guitar players in, in the mountains no, in that period of time? No, not that I recall. Now you were saying that, that your, your, your dad and your mom played the banjo and the fiddle and but everything that I've heard, that was those were the two main instruments for a long That's time. Right. Yes, sir. That's, right. That's right. And our daddy went out uh, somewhere, I don't recall, to a fair or somewhere, and he brought the bird more back That's where he picked up our home family. Mm -hmm. Cold hands, cold And that's when she got interested in the guitar. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'd rather, I'd rather play it than me. <laughs> I was determined to learn it. Uh, incidentally, while we're speaking of that, um, you know, when, I don't know if I told you this before or not, we um, were traveling with our band, and uh, we played in the community called Midway, Virginia, in Scott County. Mm -hmm. And we stayed in the home of Maybelle Carter's parents. She was Maybelle Addington, Mr. and Mrs. Hugh Addington. And I don't suppose that she knew she could play a note. But she was about the age of my sister here. And um, she asked her to teach her some notes on the guitar. Mm -hmm. So she did. And she, uh, we spent the night with them. And uh, I think next day was Sunday. And she taught her quite a few notes on the guitar. And the next thing we knew, she had married into um, what was AP and Sarah Carter. They didn't know suppose they had a band. But they all formed a band and uh, started traveling. Now, uh, Mrs. A. Mrs. Hugh Addington. Uh, she, she was a banjo player also, wasn't she? Possibly, because I think she, that's how that uh, Maybell was related to Sarah right. Carter. I think that, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I don't recall that. That's Maybelle's mother. That's, that that's Maybell's mother. I was thinking that she might have been, uh, was she an aunt of Sarah Carter? I think so. I don't recall. There's some relation there, there, but not, not to our knowledge. But when she was younger, I feel sure she did, because Maybell definitely was talented, you know, and just didn't know it. I like to think we stimulated her interest in music. I spent well, see, we went on and married in 1928. We, we retired in 1928, and they recorded. Excuse me. We, we retired in 28, and they recorded their first record, you know, in 27. That's been established. So our band was before the Carter family, and um, they recorded some old numbers. Now we know some old numbers that they put on record that our mother's brother, we used to hear him sing, and one is that, um, well let me see here, of course I would go blank. Um, It's, um, I don't know what the name of it is, but the Carter's recorded, and we didn't even bother to record it. It's, I'm going to leave, um, you want me to play a little bit of it? Yes, you sing it. If I can sing it. Well, just. Um,
played bass during the angel and sang. Now, what community was this that you actually grew up in? And that you're, you're it kind of was Russell County, Virginia. Uh, was it it's, Fort St. Paul? Or yeah. between, uh, it's between Dungan, Nicholsville, and St. Paul. Uh, uh, it's the a three farms. But on the Russell and Scott line. That's near yeah, the Russell and Scott line. Now, yeah. Yes. It's called Well, it's called yeah. Sinking Creek. That's where we attend the church, Sinking Creek Church. She wants me to play um, Scotland the Brave. Do you all familiar with that? It's, it's a Scottish number. It's not a real old, but if you ever hear the bagpipers, you'll hear that. I might play a little bit. sing enough so you could hear it. I don't know if you've ever heard a sailor on the deep blue sea. Has anyone ever heard
always thought, well, I was so tiny when we um, picked that one up and started singing it that I don't recall. My sister's not possibly. I heard that done by a number of people, and I'm interested in knowing maybe where it came from. Oh, it's really old. Yeah. It's an old one. It goes back as far as I can remember. And there is an old uh, number, the, the uh, old 97, the record the old 97. Uh, you know, that, that music is actually, it belongs to two different numbers. The Ship That Never Returned, did you ever hear that? I'm not sure. It's the same music. And, uh, I've forgotten a lot of the verses, but it has the very same music, and uh, I just thought I mentioned that for what it was worth. Do you want to play Miss Lips on
I sing or not? Can you understand my voice at all? <coughs> yes, I'm glad that you will. It's um, the season for allergies. I'm sorry. I usually do a little better than this. <laughs> been watching the Fiddlin Powers family recorded by Rhonda and Paul Congo at Clinch Valley College, Wise, Virginia, August of 1974. Public television for Johnson City and Elizabethton, this is Broadside TV. We are located at Elm and Millard Streets in Johnson City, zip code 37601, and our telephone number is 926-8191.